Well, hello, and welcome to Crucial Conversations. I'm Peter. And I'm Kevin. And we are, Kevin, we're not going back to our second part on pastors yet, but we are going to talk about some things that pastors are involved in, right? Yep. Yeah. So we've, we, we had our COVID-19 philosophical episode last week, uh, podcast, but that's kind of raised some questions for me that I've been asking and that we've been discussing in the midst of this, and that is, what is church? Uh, why do we go to church? I mean, I, that's my first question. Why do we go to church? Because right now, I can't go to church. So, you know, it raises the question as I'm talking to my kids and working through all this stuff, why do we go to church? So, we're just going to dive right into it right there. Yeah, so so is there even a biblical reason to go to church? Is is this just something we kind of made up and we kind of do because it seems like the right thing or is there actually a reason to go to church? Like why do people gather? What what's what is this? Yeah, is there something going on there that doesn't go on anywhere else that there's no other way for me to get it that we have to have it? Is that even the right it, is that even a way to think about it at all? Um, so, so that's kind of a reason to, that's a law reason to go is cause I, I have to go there cause I can't get it somewhere else, but whatever is there, the it is right. Whatever the it is. So is there, is there a different reason? Is there, is there a good reason to go to church instead of just the absence of bad? Is there a, a pause? <laughs> is there something at church that's good? Yeah. As opposed to, well, when you say bad reason, with law that makes it sound like the law itself is bad which i know you don't mean but i know what you mean i'm just i I, is there a reason i want to go to church might be a different way of saying it right yeah and is and is there something instead of the absence of of not having something then is there something actually that you do have at church that whether it was found somewhere else or not doesn't matter churches where you would like to be because that thing is so good that it's it's worth going to where that thing is okay i mean i can uh, go i can let's just pretend we're baseball fans we both write root for the correct team which is the st louis cardinals cubs like i said oh, the cardinals and and so there's a little league team down the road from my house that's called the Cardinals. As a matter of fact, they wear the same colors and they have same hats and they use the same kind of baseball. And you know, are like, they a well, little league feeder team for the real Cardinals? No, they're just a little league team, and they just okay. like all little league teams. They steal the names of the major league clubs and kind of you know. Where the I played for the Do- I played for the Dodgers, the White Sox, and the Royals. Exactly, and that's yeah. one reason you're kind of confused about who to root for now. <laughs> so. So I could go, I could go before, before all this happened, right? I could go spend my money and go watch the Cardinals downtown and Bush stadium and watch them beat the Cubs mercilessly and win yet another pennant when the Cubs struggle to once every 108 years, (laughs) or I could, you're really rubbing it in. (laughs) Nice. Or I could just go down the street and for free, watch the little five-year-olds play. They're both St. Louis Cardinals games. I mean, so what's what's the difference? Why would why would forty thousand people go to one place and not the other? Or why not watch those five year old kids on the internet on your computer? Right, at home? and now and now we have a whole other situation, which is well, I can. I mean, I actually did this today over lunch. I can watch replays of my favorite games from years past, and now I'm watching sports. And why why would you ever start up sports again? I mean, we have years for baseball we have you know hundreds of years of past games that we can either listen to or just read the stats from or or watch replays when they started being at broadcast whatever so why would we ever go back in person and why what is quantitatively different or qualitatively different between the the st louis cardinals professional baseball team and the little league team down the road that's also called the st louis cardinals and so when we can think about church is it is it just because church is unique or is it just because we have to go what what is it why why do christians weekly get up early in the morning on sunday 
and and go to a certain location with other Christians and participate in a certain um, they're different. I don't want to use words that I'll confuse people, but certain rituals, certain cultist activities. That cult isn't a bad word, by the way. Yeah. Cults <laughs> are made a la- bad word, but Latin right, cultists, right? Exactly. Yeah. Which is hey, I recognize that it was Latin. Good. Ooh. So, so why do we do this? Why do we we dress differently? We talk differently. We we go to a different location. You know, once a week for this event, at least once a week. Um, why? And that's kind of what we're getting at today. Is is why would we do this? We can go to other things that are people gathered around. Might even be able to go find a Bible study to go to, and and that's good. But but it isn't necessarily the same thing as going to church and. Why do we say that? Why are we kind of oriented our week, our schedule, our even our year, our church year around the gathering of saints on Sunday morning, which I know for some people is Saturday night or something like that, but mm-hmm. but but generally speaking, Sunday morning. What that's kind of what we're getting at today is is what is that? You know, it's not the Little League Cardinals game. It's not baseball on on YouTube, it actually is, you know, wanting to go to the real thing. Uh, Well, before we get into answering that question, I want to throw in one more example. Uh, Not a sports one, but another church one. And this is the fact that there are atheist churches now, uh, where there are large groups of people getting together. I think the first one was in the UK. It's been a while since I've read this, where they gather together, they uh, listen to some music or sing along with the music. They have a speaker. Uh, they have announcements. They have a lot of the same order that we would have in our services. Um, the the speaker's a motivational speaker, some sort of thing. And so they're getting together and having, like, I think, fellowship would be an appropriate word in, in, in their context and how they define that. Um and they they were doing it once a week. I, I have to look and see if this is still happening. <laughs> um, how much this is still going on? But the, this idea that people gathering together on a regular basis, meeting with each other, and I think that that fits in a little bit here, if only because we're we're still doing something different from that, even. Um, and so it, I, I only said it to say that our answer isn't just going to be well, fellowship and seeing other people. Uh, Because if that were the case, then we could go to the atheist church and hang out there and do their thing because they have that too. Well, or we could go to the Cardinals game. Yeah. And enjoy fellowship with with the the fans that root for the correct baseball team. The Cubs, when they're playing the Cubs. No, those fans are quite annoying. I've been to those games. So, (laughs) yeah, I mean, this is all kind of the issue is, is... when you look at it from a sociological point of view or an anthropological point of view, um, it, it looks like a gathering that we could imitate in other arenas or even find metaphors for or parallels with in other avenues, right? So, mm-hmm. so atheists can imitate church by gathering once a week, maybe in the morning, and maybe even having a, a set order of, of ritualistic um, words, songs, dress, whatever, right? A building, right. they could light candles, you know, all the stuff that, that some people would say, well, that makes church. And this is part of the issue is when people say, well, what, what, what is essential to constitute church? And I think these are, these are kind of some of the things that, that you and I have been working through. And, and I think a lot of Christians have um, on one level or another through this, this situation where we are um, either forbidden or not allowed or unable to go to church, at least in the way we used to go to church. Yeah. Um, at, at best, maybe you've got a small group of, you know, 10 people that are showing up and that's, that's the most common of yeah. anybody going to church at this point. Right. So, so what is it about church that, that makes it worth it for, for you to get up and get your kids ready and, and, pretending you actually get your kids ready but you know <laughs> sometimes i do yeah occasionally yeah, you know what yeah. what is it that was so important that i taught my daughters this is something you do without fail you don't question this you don't ever skip you know you go no matter what um 
what what was so important about that was it just the the ritual was it just the the morality you know it kind of keeps them out of trouble a lot of people say well you know hopefully they'll learn something good or something you know and mm-hmm. and i think you and i would would strongly say that actually that has nothing to do with it yeah if morality is all they're getting out of it well we got veggie tales for that or even or even <laughs> ritualistic patterns or, or you know, yeah, teaching them good, quote a, the right thing to do or something a, a good habit to start off your week yeah i mean all those kind of things we say well okay i understand from certain points of view but but that's not church none of that actually has anything to do with church and yeah. and it's not surprising anybody listen to this podcast but but when we talk church we're really talking christology yep which is really again words about jesus and and this is kind of where the reason we go to church is because of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And church is, is very much tied up in the incarnation, the perfect life, the death, the resurrection, the ascension, and the promise of the second coming of Jesus. And when we talk about going to church, you know, the verbs are weird and descriptions are weird, but really what we're talking about is going to the place where where God comes to us through word and sacrament to deliver to us what Christ did in his incarnation, life, death, resurrection, ascension, and what we look forward to in the second coming. See, all of that is actually given in the church. That's that's the point of church is is Christ. It's okay, not, give that definition again really quick. So so the church is really the coming together of, of God's people to receive from God through word and sacrament what Christ accomplished through his incarnation, perfect life, death, resurrection, ascension, and what we look forward to in the second coming. Okay, so let, let's start off right at the beginning and go to scripture. Where would we go into, into the Bible to, to see this? I mean, I, I think it's Matthew 28 one place where we can go well i mean this i is, think about that because we've just finished matthew 28 this or sorry the bible and five for matthew script is done and it might even be recorded so i'm thinking about that yeah i mean i i think so i i i would actually turn to and this is going to be a weird text i understand that but i would i always look at first corinthians chapter 11 which is the text that we go to for the lord's supper but it's really, it's really a text in which we see Paul talking about the assembly of believers when we come together, right? And and That's it's all about us coming together, and you know it's really explicit in verse set eleven seventeen. In the following instructions, I do not commend you because when you come together, see it's the it's the assumption that this church in Corinth is regularly coming together around the sacrament. And when you read Romans 10, you, you you think about the church being gathered together to hear from one who's been called to preach and, and to preach specifically the word of Christ. Hmm. When, you, when you think about the church in Acts, you know, Acts 2, kind of the first place where the church is, is gathered together, you know, after the death and resurrection of Christ, after the Holy Spirit, they're, they're gathered together and it's around the, the apostles preaching so Acts 2, right? Acts 2.42, the mm-hmm. apostles' teaching, the breaking of bread, the fellowship, and the prayer. But but again, notice it's the church gathered together around the word and the sacraments. So you said you mentioned 1 Corinthians 11.17, but 18, it even says, for in the first place, when you come together as, as the a church. church. Right. Mine says a church, the church. What does... You're you're a Greek scholar. You know your Greek. What's going on there? Is this is this a building? Is this a place? Is this a when it says a church? What are the implications of of that in this well, the, particular passage? In this particular passage, if we if we believe the scholarship around the town of Corinth, what's actually happening here is that you have several house churches in Corinth, and. This is probably when those house churches would actually gather together as a larger group to celebrate the Lord's Supper as kind of the churches in Corinth. Um, hmm. 
but whether it's that or something else doesn't overly matter. It's but the idea is in Greek they are gathering together in ecclesia as the church, as you know, a church if you want. But but really the the, <laughs> the is imp- implied in the word. So um, I, I ask because we, right now we're hearing a lot of this. The church is not a building; it's a people. Yeah, and I think that's that's part of what we're getting at as we talk about this. Is is the church is neither a building nor a people. Okay, that's and that's what I'm wondering because I'm like that. I know it's not a building, but it seems weird to like bring that up and then contrast it with, but it's a people because that doesn't quite yeah, seem right either. As if it's just any people or, or what? I don't know. Again, we well, what we do so often when we think about things, we meaning me, human, <laughs> right? Human people, although I'm not always totally associated with that group, but um, <laughs> but when we humans think about things is we we necessarily make it about us. Hmm. So, so what do you say? Well, the church isn't a building and we're trying to affirm something in that, which is probably good. You know, right. The church is not defined as the, as the building that we build out of brick and mortar and, and steel and whatever. That's, that's not the eternal church. That's not the one Jesus was talking about. Matthew 16, right? On the mm-hmm. rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It doesn't promise that my building will stand until the second coming. Right. Right. I think that's not really that complicated, nor is it that insightful. I don't think many people believe that they're, I think children do, but I think, I think most adults <laughs> realize that the physical building they attend on Sunday morning is not what the Bible means by the church. And certainly not what Christians mean when we talk about the church, mm-hmm. but, but it is, our, but it is my church, right? It is a building. Yeah. I do go to church in a building. So in that way, it it is a building. And then you say, well, it's not the church, it's the people. And you say, okay, so so the church is, um, I'm just going to make up names so I don't offend anybody, but the, the, the church is Sally and Bob who sit in the pew next to me and, and George and Irma who we, we know very well and, you know, whoever and whoever. And you say, well, no, no, because if they don't come, it's still the church. Right, so then all of a sudden it's not it's yeah, not even if it's different individual people. people. So then all yeah. of a sudden it's generic people. Well, no, there aren't anything. There aren't generic people, <laughs> and the church is not full of generic people. The church is is full of specific people, but it's not those specific people that make the church because if they don't show up, it's still the church, right? Yeah. So you don't want to start saying, "Well, the church is Peter," and then but then all of a sudden you don't show up on Sunday. And I go, "Well, I thought we we're gonna have church, but Peter didn't come." It's like, well, okay, no, no, as long as, as long as his wife comes, we're good. Well, you know, she's sick home too. And what happens then, you know, and then all of a sudden you're starting saying, well, no, I didn't mean it when I said the church is people. I didn't mean it was specific people. I mean, it was you know, like people and you go, well, I don't know generic people. And Jesus didn't, <laughs> doesn't baptize generic people. We actually give them names when we baptize them. So we say, is, is the church then those individual people? And we say, no, 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 that's not what I meant. So the building's not church. Right, the church is not a building, and actually, the mm-hmm. church is not people. What is it? <laughs> well, well, that's why I asked you this yeah, question initially, Kevin. So, so you start going on this road. And you go, wait a minute. Yeah. What? What is actually the essence of the church? And what we come down to is the essence of the church is really God coming to sinners through word and sacrament, and that's what it is. And uh, and the question is, is that a building? It's like, well, that happens in a building. Sometimes, as you well know, it don't have to happen in a building. <laughs> right? You yeah, and I, I, I have, both I, worshipped where there wasn't a building. Yeah, I, I have my example about, you know, you can have church outside under a tree. And, you know, if your church can't be conducted under a tree, you you might be doing something right. else. If it requires those other exactly. things in order to be church. Exactly. Um, and so Bible class doesn't have to happen in a classroom or, or a room with a whiteboard or whatever. It can happen anywhere. Well, yours has to happen with the whiteboard. Mine has to happen with the whiteboard. You have no idea what to do. Right. I wouldn't know how to teach. <laughs> okay, here's my here's my next question because this is now the other question that is swirling around this. So we, we still haven't fully clarified everything. We haven't fully zeroed in. That's good. Here, here's the other thing. Well, what if we're if we're coming together, we're gathering together, but it's online. So, Kevin, you and I have gathered together to do this podcast right now. You in your house, I in mine. Um, or when we, you do the Bible study that we'll be live streaming tomorrow, Tuesday nights that we do here on our, on our channel, on the YouTube channel, 
we're gathering together for Bible study. You're in your house, I'm in mine, the other participants are in theirs, all over the world coming together. And we started to say, well, it's at the same time for the same purpose, and it's around God's Word. Mm -hmm. So, that's church, right? If, if we so, then do... If, if so, we do it on Sunday morning, so do me then a favor, Peter. Church. Tomorrow night during Bible study, could you bake some cookies and give them to me? I got mad at your daughter because she was baking cookies in Seward, Nebraska, and like posting pictures on See? Instagram, and she didn't give them to me. But but they're this. I was like, I don't thing. want that. I want the cookie. But you guys are gathered around the cookies, right? You're gathered around the picture of the cookies. You uh -huh. know her. She knows you. You're interacting as people. What's the difference? It's, it seems silly when we phrase it in that way, but this is the struggle that we're having right now right, as but, a church. <laughs> but you would not you would not say that she made those cookies for you and that you enjoyed them. You enjoyed the smell of them. You enjoyed the taste of them. You enjoyed getting mm -hmm. the chocolate chips on your fingers because they're a little too melty yet to eat. You didn't get to dunk <laughs> them in a glass of milk. You know, you didn't get to whatever, right? And you would in say, In fact, well, what she said is you were going to eat them before they even got to exactly. me. So she blamed you. <laughs> well, it was my fault because I probably did eat them. But see, that's the point is, is nobody would look at baked cookies online and say, oh, that's just as good as being there when they were actually being made and having some. No, or or we'd even an say, acceptable temporary substitute. Right. We'd say, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. I didn't get the cookies. I mean, I saw them and, and that's nice. And she could, say, she could describe them to you, but it's not the same thing. So... She could even make a movie of them. Now, and now what, what most people would be thinking in their heads right now is, yeah, but we're not just talking about the sacrament. We're talking about the word. What if we, yeah. just, what if we just have church around the word? And, and isn't that acceptable? And, and I think here is where we really we need to be careful. And I don't want to offend anybody. And I don't want to bind anybody's consciences to certain things. But I do want to be clear about certain things. Which is, we can hear the word through various ways. Mm -hmm. We can hear it on radio. We can hear it recorded on CDs. We can, we can hear it on an MP3s on our phones as we're going for, out for a walk. We can stream it online these days and listen to our pastors as they deliver a, a sermon. We can, mm -hmm. we can listen to Bible class online, right? But, but let's be clear. None of that is the way that God desires to be with us. Okay, that's an important point. How does God desire to be with us? Think about the Bible. Physically. Yes. He's it, always coming to us. We, we physically. haven't used the word yet, but I think we're going towards incarnation. Yeah. Incarnationally so is, is what we're going when towards. God here. wants to actually be with us to forgive our sins, to bring us into his kingdom, to, to bring his kingdom to us and then bring us into that kingdom. He doesn't do it by staying remote. He does it by yeah. coming in the flesh to share in flesh and blood, to share, to breathe the air we breathe, to walk the roads we walk, right? To, to touch mm -hmm. our skin, to have skin, all these things. And, and what you learn, I mean, just think about the very first story in the Bible. What's the very first story in the Bible? The first characters you meet, they have names. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. And how do they encounter God? Walking in the garden. Right. They hear his voice. Yeah. And they walk with him in the garden. See, that's those are those are physically coming to his people. That's God physically coming to his people. In the second coming, Jesus isn't gonna just you know, we all think that James Earl Jones sounds like God, right? And he always plays God in the movies and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> or Morgan Freeman. Or Morgan Freeman, which is yeah. kind of a, more of a new age view of God, but whatever. <laughs> um, but but that's not how it's going to go. Uh, yes, there are going to be trumpets, right? You can point to certain verses where there's any trumpets coming and a voice or whatever. But, but what's going to happen is Jesus is actually going to physically come back. See, that's clear. Mm -hmm. It's it's not just a disembodied voice. It's not just broadcast. It's physical gathering. And when Jesus comes, what does it say? Think about, you guys know these texts, and we're referring to texts you guys know. You don't have to look them all up. Matthew mm -hmm. 25, right? It It's described as a physical gathering of people. 
sheep and goats, right? And we're going to run left because we want to be on Jesus's right hand. Yep. And, you know, but it's, it's described as a physical gathering of people. So when Christ returns, it's going to be a physical gathering. Think about the book of Revelation, what's happening in heaven. It's a physical gathering around the throne, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's physical. All of this is, is physical. And, and the church... There are thousands upon thousands of actual people, people right? gathered. Not yeah. ideas. <laughs> yep. Not people plugged in and listening remotely. People gathered around. And, and this is not just because there wasn't technology or something. No, this is actually how God has made us, how he has remade us, and how he desires to be with us is, is through his incarnational mm-hmm. presence. And, and this is what worship is, is we physically gather around the physically preached word and the physically given sacraments. And, and what, that's the essence of the church. And, and we, we can't pretend that's not it. We can't pretend that, that being removed from that is okay, because it's not. Okay. So we're, we're dealing with this in the midst of COVID-19 and, and distance being distanced from our congregations because of that and gathering. But what you just said means there are actually some deeper implications for how we look at church that go beyond this, this instance. Um, physically gathering to hear the physically preached word. Right. Okay, well, I, I, I know many congregations all around the world where their method of preaching is a pastor somewhere else is on is broadcast on a screen into their sanctuary auditorium mm-hmm. worship mm-hmm. location and so they're physically gathered there in that location but the right. pastor is physically somewhere else right being broadcast in right that and and again that's that's not exactly what we would say is how the ideal setting should be we would say there's okay. something removed in that setting from the way the scriptures present this to us. We're having to make concessions for some reason, for some mm-hmm. situation. This isn't exactly how it's supposed to be. And and Jesus will not appear to you on a screen in the second coming. I promise you that. He will <laughs> physically show up and, and you're going to have to physically deal with that. I, I, th- I think part of the reason we're struggling through this, our current context is... I know for, for myself, I don't know if I fully thought through what is the church in, right. in all of this to then so, think through, uh-oh, what, what else? Have, we, okay, we've talked about, you know, well, you can have church, the, the guy who wants to go fishing and he can worship God better on a fishing boat than he can, you know, sitting there in the church service. We had, a, we had an episode about that. And, right. You, know, you can't be a Lone Ranger Christian by yourself. Um, so, but now it seems like we're... We're thinking about church, I don't know, more fully is the right way because not, we haven't even talked about virtual baptism. Right. So that's going to come so, into this eventually. So, <laughs> so what happens is... It, is, is I, the, we, the concessions, maybe that's what I'm trying to get to. We, we've already made concessions, we've already made concessions in different places. And, and this, is, this is part of what I think you and I have been talking about and thinking through in, in, in light of our present situation is... It seems as though right now, and we're not going to assign blame or, or explain why, but for, but for many congregations, we are, we are unable to worship the way that we are called to worship. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think my, my suggestion would be to not try to redefine church to make our present situation acceptable. Yeah. Instead, what I think we should do is, is join with the saints of the Old Testament and cry out to God, how long, O Lord? Mm-hmm. How long until I can get back to Zion? How long till we can get back to the way that you have called us to worship you? And instead of saying we're going to change our theology or we're going to concede certain ideas, we're going to say, oh, no, 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 this is fine. I think instead we should, we should, we should literally pray for an end to this, Bec- not because I'm worried about a disease, not because I want to get back to watching the Cardinals. I mean, <laughs> whatever, right? No, because I long to worship the way God has called us to be the church, which are physical Christians physically gathering 
around the physically preached word and the physically delivered sacraments. And we long for that. We long for it in, a, in our current situation. I long to go back to my congregation and sit in my pew, which by the way, everyone knows which pew is mine, <laughs> right? And, and I long, as a Bible study teacher, I, I long to physically be in the room where I'm teaching people. But, but more than that, more than that even, this reminds us of a longing that we have for the eternal reality of being physically gathered. And, and we are in this exile right now from our ability to worship. And I do encourage people to, to read the Old Testament saints on this. Um, how they dealt with exile. They did not say, oh no, this is fine over here in Babylon or in Assyria. No, they they longed to get back to Jerusalem. They longed to get back mm. to the temple. They longed to get back to the promised land. Well, that's where we are right now. We are longing. And, and I think it's appropriate for Christians to spend some time in repentance and, and spend some time in prayer, spend some time in longing, pray the Psalms, Read the prophets you might have never read before. Now, again, as I always say to the prophets, go in with a buddy, right? Find somebody <laughs> you trust, hold their hand and read the prophets together. Don't go in alone. You might not come out okay. But but really, read the prophets with your pastor. Read your prophets with somebody who can who can help you weed weed through the, the tough parts. Um, but, but these are guys who were te- dealing with a situation in which the people of God could not physically gather around the place where God had called them to worship. And, and I think we need to learn from that to not be complacent and say, oh, no, I figured this out, so it's okay. No, instead we say, this is not okay. This is not the way it's designed. This is not mm-hmm. what God wants. We are in exile. Why? Well, let's repent, right? Let's repent. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing. Read Isaiah 40. Comfort, comfort right? That's how it starts. Mm-hmm. Comfort my people. And it goes on. And you know how it goes because the word of the Lord endures forever. And then Isaiah 55, which is the end of the, of the section, it also returns to the word of the Lord. So so even in this time of exile, see, we don't turn in despair to say God has left us. No. In our time of exile, we rejoice that we are still able to hear the word. Mm. And yeah. we do and a lot of you guys are doing this and and keep going guys keep doing it cling to that word find opportunities online a lot of you are listening to more bible studies than you used to some of you are listening to several sermons on sunday morning some of you are listening to daily devotions that we're providing from the lutheran church missouri synod or or finding other daily devotions from your pastor or something like that right mm-hmm. good Spend more time in the word with your family. This is what we do in exile also, is we cling to the word, we run to the word, we read the word, we memorize the word, we teach the word. Don't stop doing that. But as you're doing it, don't ever pretend that this disembodied reality is the fullness of what God wants us to be in the church. Or, or even a, an acceptable temporary substitute. Right. Because uh, I think this this is what I've I've been struggling with. And I think... Sometimes when I, when I've had this conversation with others and and even with you to a certain degree, when when you and I say these things, something that can very easily be heard is, oh, so my church shouldn't be streaming its service. I shouldn't be doing this online because that's not church. So I shouldn't be doing it at all. That's not what we're saying. Not at all. What no, we're, do that. What we're saying, yeah, we're saying do those things. Just don't call them church, or, or don't or don't <laughs> call them the fullness of church. Say, yeah. say, this is the best we can do for now, but we long for the day. We look forward to the day when we get back to a closer idea of what the fullness of what this is to be the body of Christ. Here, I, okay, here's another struggle that I, that I have seen um, come as, as a result of this. Because if we're saying that's not the fullness of church, well, is it enough? If, okay, this, good. if I need these good. things to be a Christian, if I need church, if I need to be there physically gathered, well, is what I'm getting enough? And and that's where, when whenever you ask the question of, is it enough? Is it sufficient? Does this count? Right? Yeah. Now you're asking a law question. And the law will always cause you to, to be scared to feel mm-hmm. convicted or to question things. And so what you want to say is, is this enough? 
then the answer to that question is simply Christ and him crucified. Are you receiving in the word you're hearing Christ and him crucified? Are you listening to a pastor, a preacher, a Bible study leader who is communicating to you Christ and him crucified? If you are hearing that, then believe the Holy Spirit is working through that word to grant you faith, to strengthen your faith, to keep you in the one true faith. That that's what we cling to. That's what I said. We cling to the word in these times. We don't run away from it. So if your pastor is live streaming church, definitely listen to it and encourage him to keep doing so. Thank mm-hmm. him for that. Let him know that you appreciate it. Let him know that you love the fact that he is providing for you a way to hear the word and let him know that you can't wait to physically gather with all the other saints again. Let him know that. Let in, Encourage your family members to, to stream church with you. Encourage your unbelieving friends, maybe this is the time for them to turn into church. That's right. But again, at the time, don't ever pretend that this is the fullness. Say, this is, this is just a, a little bit of what it's like to actually be part of the church, right? You get to hear the word and Christ is in his word, but this isn't the fullness of it yet. Is, is there a parallel to our own children before they begin receiving the Lord's Supper, where they, they're hearing the word, they've been baptized, but they're, they're not partaking in the Lord's Supper yet. They're not partaking in that fullness of church right. so, as adults are. So you have, you have kids that are not yet confirmed. Uh-huh. So if, if something terrible happened, right, mm-hmm. and they never were able to be confirmed, nobody would doubt their faith. Right. Nobody would say, well, they didn't get to receive the Lord's Supper, therefore they're not really Christians. Nobody. Are you kidding me? Right? <laughs> I mean, we would say, oh, we right. got the promise of baptism. They heard the word. They're in Christ. There's no doubt about it. Right? Yeah. Well, that's exactly what we're saying is when you ask, is this sufficient? The answer is always going to be, no, 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 no. There's, there's something greater promised. When you're going to say, is Christ still coming to me this way? You say, yes, that's God's promise. That in the word, he's going to come to you. In the word, the spirit's going to work. In the word, he's going to you know, fulfill his promises in Christ. But, but that doesn't mean that we just stop and say, okay, I don't need any more. No, I go to church on Sunday. Let's, let's just put ourselves back and go to church on Sunday. I go to church on Sunday and the pastor says, you know, in the stead of the command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all those sins in your Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I say, great, I got all I need, I'm leaving. <laughs> no. Because my wow, sins are forgiven. Five minutes of church right. today. Woo, going. we're done. See, and so I just came for forgiveness. I got what I want. I'm out of here. No, see, that's that's not at all we want to say. We want to say, great, now I want to join together in the praises of God. Now I want to pray together with the church. Now I want to hear the word. Now I want to hear the sermon. Now I want to I want to join in the prayers of all the saints. Now I want to receive the sacrament of the Lord's body and blood again for the forgiveness of my sins. You know, it's it's not with Jesus. It's not well. This is this is the bare minimum. Therefore, I'm good. No, it's it's God comes to us graciously, and He comes to us graciously even more. Mm-hmm. Right? I, grace upon grace is what it says in the first chapter of John. I, I know we're kind of we're at the end of our our episode here. We're at the end of our time, but I, I have one more question I want to add to this to kind of round out our is it enough discussion because I think the the other side of that when we when we answer that law question when we feel condemned by it um when i hear no it's it's not enough it's not the fullness right my tendency my other tendency so we have a couple different ways of handling it we've talked about one side the other side is to find a way to say yes right this this is enough and i think our church the church the american Mm -hmm. church the global church right now is at a dangerous place because we really, really want to say what we have right now is enough. Um, and there are many places who have said this is enough in order to not feel the full sting of that law where, no, this isn't the way it's supposed to be. This isn't right. There's more and we're missing it in order to avoid feeling that. Right. I th- they're, they're running to finding ways to say, no, this is enough. I think we see the same thing in our in our kids who aren't confirmed. Sometimes we see this ah, infant communion. That's usually where that whole right. discussion kind of comes yeah. up, is, <laughs> and which is a whole other discussion. But but I think, but I, I bring it because there's there's parallels. Right, there are a lot in, of parallels in terms it's, of how we right. theologically think through these problems. It's mm-hmm. kind of a similar 
process. And I think this wow. is this is part of the of the Western consumerist individualist um, fast moving society is that we don't like to live in an unresolved situation where we can't say, oh, we've got this figured out. This is good. Yeah. But but I, I actually do encourage us. I'm I'm doing this in my personal devotion life and and with my family is trust me, we're reading the minor prophets. They're not really <laughs> happy with me right now. But, <laughs> but I I do encourage people to not try to make this okay. Yeah. To make this to to admit what this is. This is this stinks. It's not good to be separated from the body of Christ. It's not good to worship through a computer screen or to attend church virtually. That's not good. If we can even call it worship right, if you can or call it attending things, church. Right, whatever if you we should even it. use those right, terms. Whatever, yeah. But the point is, this isn't good. Now, on the flip side, I literally thank God. When I say that, I mean, I say literally because I mean not blasphemously, like actually, actually saying yes. thank you to, to our Lord, that he's allowed me to hear the word in these ways. Hmm. And, and that is a blessing from him. And, and again, I want to reiterate it. We are saying to take advantage of it. Yes. Live stream your church services. Thank your pastor for what he's providing for you. If it's a podcast, I know one pastor who's just podcasting. He doesn't have video capabilities, but he's putting on a podcast of his sermon. Listen thank him for it. You know, try to set aside time on your Sunday mornings to gather around your computer if you have to, but, but do set aside time to take advantage of the, uh, the live stream or the audio or whatever. We are not saying to avoid that or that pastor shouldn't be doing it. The opposite. We're saying do it and rejoice that it's available and rejoice that God still comes to you in his word. But at the same time, don't pretend that that's the whole thing. There is a way for us to be thankful for what we have and long for the, the fullness of what God has promised. Mm -hmm. Right? I yeah. mean, this is actually the whole idea of how the church lives between the ascension and the second coming. We thank God for forgiveness of sins. We thank God for the sacraments. We thank God for our pastors. We thank God for the New Testament. We thank God for the Old Testament. At the same time, we say, but this isn't the fullness of who I am in Christ. You think of Colossians chapter three. This is the whole point. Since you have been raised with Christ, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you have died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appeared, didn't you will appear with him in glory. See, we actually, we look to the second coming of Christ and we long for it because it's the fullness mm -hmm. that doesn't discount the gifts we have now. Yeah. But it makes us long for the fullness. And that's what we're saying. Thank God for the word that you're hearing. Thank your pastor for it. Thank your church for it. But never give in to the temptation to say, this is now the fullness of church. No, it's not. We are, we are separated from our small taste of the fullness, what it will be for eternity. And that small taste is our gathering on Sunday mornings. And we long to gather again because that's the way God has made us. That's how he comes to us. And that's really how it, the church exists. And that gathering around the word of Christ, around Christ himself, that's the crucial conversation. Um, that's, that's, that's what we got for you today. If you guys have questions, please send them in. Questions at crucialproductions.org is the email address. Head on over to crucialproductions.org and there's an ask a question form there. Or if you want to support what we do financially, there's a give option there as well. But uh, thank you guys for joining us and have a good night. See ya.